books have nothing to do with the subject I'm going to talk about. They're just something on other subjects I batted out before the program. But now I'm going to talk about the most serious problem in the whole world. Do you know what is the most serious problem facing people today? Do you know what it is? People! Ooh. And you know something else? There are three billion people in the world. So it actually makes three billion problems, if you want to look at it that way. Whew. Now, through scientific research, we psychologists have come to one conclusion. People make more trouble for people than anybody because they are always putting their foot in it. Oh, they take up what the... Uh, and you know why? Because people are stupid. That's why! Oh, oh my... Oh, boy, I tell you, they got a hangnail in Indonesia tonight. Well, now, let's see, where was I? Oh, I tell you, people just don't think. Think, that's spelled T-H-I-M. Wait a second, what about it? K, think. <laughs> they don't use their heads. Now, everyone has at least one head. Some are fat heads. Some is blockheads. And some are eggheads. Like me, see? Now, no matter what shape your head is in, everyone has a brain in there somewhere. Did you know about three pounds of you is brains? And your brain is bigger than that of any other living animal. Unless you happen to be an elephant or something. Are you an elephant or something? Of course, if you are, what are you doing sitting in the living room? Elephants is supposed to watch television from outside. What am I saying? The subject, what was, what was I talking about? Oh, yes, the size of the brain. An elephant is a kind of a peanut brain compared to his size. But sizes of brains don't count anyhow. No matter how hard he tries, an animal cannot think. Everything he does is because of instinct and emotion. Man is the only animal with the ability to think. And no other animal can make that statement. And if he does, he's lying. For instance, if the elephant could think, he'd build himself a stall shower. And he'd have hot and cold running water too. <laughs> When a man scratches his head, it shows he's thinking. When an animal scratches, it shows he's itching. Now here's a kooky way to fish. Ooh, when he gets a bite, he gets bit. <laughs> Look at that squirrel head. If he had any sense, he'd grab a taxi. Besides, you'd think he'd hitch a hike on one of those goonie birds. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if those goonies could think, they'd go back to the old drawing board and redesign their landing gear. Maybe that squirrel had better stick to taxis after all. Look at this bird brain. You think he'd install an escalator or something? No, he gotta do it the hard way. Whoop, watch it! Monkeys seem almost human but match his brains against man's. Like, for instance, in a simple game of draw poker. And obviously, the monkey will lose. This is hardly a fair test, because Van Dyke is a sharpie. I mean, expert at the game. <laughs> Look, already he's confused. He doesn't know what to do with him. Well, come on, quit monkeying around. How much you gonna bet? One chip? Boy, what a cheap chimp. See, he doesn't even know enough to draw any cards. Oh, you standing pat? <laughs> oh, what a sucker I got here. Okay, I'll see you. What you got? Royal Flash? <laughs> Beginner's luck. I had to play cards with a lucky monkey. 
Yes, he sure made a monkey out of me, that's what he did. Now that I have proved beyond any doubt man's superior reasoning power over the animal, how come he gets himself into so much trouble? Well, this gets us right down to the point. The human head. <laughs> we psychologists have found out what goes on in there. And I want to tell you right here and now that sometimes it isn't very much, I tell you. Now, there are two things that control the mind. In psychology, we call them reason and emotion. And they are always battling for control. Of course, in the undeveloped mind of a child, there is only emotion. Just like the animals, he can't reason yet. Let's go inside Junior's head and watch emotion at work. Aha! Here he is. He's got the whole place to himself. He can do as he pleases because reason isn't born yet. Meanwhile, emotion is complete dictator in his control over the child. Emotion loves adventure and excitement. And so he says, Let's go down there. Don't be scared. It'll be fun. So Junior starts down. Hmm. Emotionally upset. Well, the battle's on. And so Junior grows up into an average normal male. Time has brought about many changes inside his head since childhood. Reason seems to be in the driver's seat, with emotion under control in the rear. It served him right, young lady. Oh, by the way, may we borrow your pretty head for a moment? Thank you. <laughs> Here again, you have the evidence that uncontrolled emotion can cause you a lot of trouble. And speaking of trouble, if you worry about everything you read in the papers, you're going to have perpetual emotion. Let's take the case of Mr. John Dokes, who tries to keep up with current events. Tonight's news is very grim. It looks bad, folks, and it's bound to get a whole lot worse. Hey, you know what I just heard? I heard the slobs are taking all our I homes. heard on the radio the other night. I got some inside because you got to be a forty years old. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. 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 I'm
Oops! <laughs> How about that? I had it on my mind all the time. Now you see what happens when you go off half cock? That's what happens. Well, anyway, all right. <clears throat> this is the story of Chicken Little, and it takes place in a nice, cozy farmyard. The characters in order of their appearance are Cocky Locky, Headman, Chicken Inspector, Supervisor of Egg Production. A good guy to know nowadays. <laughs> this is Henny Penny and the local rocking chair brigade. Always ready to poke their beaks into everybody's business instead of sticking to their knitting. Here we have them at the bridge table. Who are they pecking to pieces now? Let's listen in. Mm, sound just like people, don't they? Now we see them at Madame Poulet's beauty coop. She's getting a red henna rinse. This is Turkey Lurkey and the smart set, who spend all day discussing what is wrong with the world. There's this element too, the ginner birds, a pretty feather-brained crowd. Pussy and Ducky Lucky and all the other gay ducks. A thirsty group, always around when there's something to drink. Now, last but not least, here is Chicken Little, Playboy, Yo-Yo Champ. A little shy on brains, but a good egg as chickens go. As our story continues, we find all our fine feathered friends happy and contented, and why not? Didn't they have a big strong fence protecting them? But wait a minute, what's this? Aha! It's Foxy Loxy, the poultry fancier. Looks like he's taking an interest in our little community. A culinary interest. So why doesn't he just jump in and help himself? Do you suppose it's because of the high fence? Or the locks on the inside? Or the farmer's uh, shotgun? <laughs> Guess that's the end of yours too, Mr. Foxy Loxy. Uh-oh, there it goes, the whispering campaign. Sort of a perpetual emotion. Don't worry, folks, this all turns out all right. Mmm, delicious. Hey, wait a minute, this isn't right. That's not the way it ends in my book. Oh, yeah? Don't believe everything you read, brother. You're probably wondering what I'm doing, aren't you? I'm thinking. You know, that's the wonderful thing about thinking. There's no strain, except maybe your head might hurt a little bit, especially when you're not used to using it. <laughs> but before my program is over, you're all going to know how to use your head for something beside a hat rack. <laughs> now, there are two ways to do anything. The right way and the wrong way. Uh, but anyway, here we have Fig A, 3B, Ladder C. See? Now man, D for dumb, the non-thinking man, wants fig A. Ignores ladder C, jumps up and down, can't reach fig A, does it the hard way, climbs B3. Man out on a limb, limb E, breaks! Man, D, ugh, as accident. The T man, or thinking man, wants fig A. Figures way to get fig. Let us see, of course. It's as simple as the ABGs, see? Anyway, this is what started Newton to thinking. 
And you gotta start thinking if you wanna stay out of trouble. I know we all can't be fig Newtons, but every year millions of accidents happen around a home because people just don't use their heads. They are just plain careless. <laughs> Who is that stupid idiot who does this lunch down here? You wanna get me killed or something? What's the matter with you? You are some kind of a... Ooh, you... It's... You see what I mean? It's numbskulls like this one who cause accidents. And yet, when this careless nut has an accident, does he have the honor to blame himself? No, he blames fate for his fate. Now, can you imagine blaming a little guy like J.J. Fate here? Howdy! Oh, this cute little fella wouldn't hurt anyone. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I forgot you couldn't see him. <laughs> J.J., switch yourself on. Oh, that's better. Come on, J.J., get it off your chest. Tell us all about it. I'm J.J. Fate, uh, Fall Guy. My middle name is Jonah, and Jinx is in there, too. Hoodoo fits me like a glove, but Fate's my name to you. This is an average neighborhood. These are average homes. Average people live here. Having average accidents. Because they don't use average intelligence. And here comes an average citizen home from work. Average? What's my nephew doing there? He's average? I'm going to bed. Now I'm safe. He'll be safer in bed, all right. Because sleeping doesn't require thinking. So. I guess fate will have to wait till morning to see if Mr. Ducks learned his lesson. He's learned his lesson, but obviously his family hasn't. Well, well, JJ. Around the house, Mr. Ducks become a regular safety engineer. <laughs> he's finally using his head, and he's lucky he still has a head to use. But when Mr. Duck arrives at work, he checks in and his mind checks out. Looks like JJ's in for more trouble. You see how often fate gets to blame just because some numbskull won't use his brain? And you know something? This brain he won't use is worth using. For centuries it's helped man to harness the limitless energy of the universe. To unlock the secrets of nature. To create monstrous engines from his own ingenuity. Those tremendous power plants that keep the wheels of industry turning, they didn't just happen, you know. And the result of all this scientific achievement is for the benefit of man himself, so that he has the time to create even greater achievements. Well, another day, another dollar. They are waiting at the post. They're off and running well, folks. The daily traffic derby is underway. Look who's our first traffic victim of the evening. Yes, sir. As you can see, man is his own worst enemy because he just doesn't think. And that's his problem. But when he's behind the wheel of a car and doesn't think, He's public enemy number one, and that is everybody's problem. And when I say everybody, <laughs> I mean everybody. Something's got to be done, and I've already done it. Right here, I got a lot of ideas that'll solve the traffic problem. These will make the highway safer for everyone. First and most important, I'd take those nutty woman drivers and put them on separate highways. So that the motorist can keep his mind on the road, I'd remove all the distracting billboards and blend them into the scenery. all the cooks who insist on straddling the white lines, I'd have thinner cars. And wider cars for important business conferences that can't wait. Do you hate to have cars pass you? You want to stay ahead of the pack? How about this gimmick? Oh, 
<laughs> Here's a couple of beauties, or three or four. Traffic is getting more congested all the time. So why not this new car design? In a traffic tire, a way to study the problem. And if traffic traps you, a portable automobile. Of course, a blowout in this car is a real beaut. You know something? A lot of people drive around on tires that are, well, they are tired. This problem will be gone forever with rubber highways and concrete wheels. Except maybe the highway might blow out once in a while. Stalled freight trains won't hold you up anymore. Ever been stuck without a car? Here's a dream come true. Disposable too. <laughs> Another solution to traffic pileups, my do-it-yourself freeway. And speaking of freeways, with my freeways, you'll always know what city you're in. The Milwaukee Pretzel Cloverleaf. The Florida Keys Overpass. The Wheeling, West Virginia traffic circle. The Texas Lone Star interchange. The Chicago Loop. And the Las Vegas toll road. <laughs> and next, a few time-saving ideas. Hungry? Well, here's a way to get a quick snack and still keep rolling along. <laughs> You all messed up from a lot of driving? The Von Drake Mobile Car Wash will provide complete service en route. You could catch up with all the latest motion pictures while in motion from one city to the next. Long distance driving can wear you out and cause accidents. Relax in the Von Drake Slumber Bus. To take care of those crazy nuts who still insist on driving carelessly, I'd have a portable clink. Arrested, tried, and sentenced all in a package deal. Aren't those ideas terrific? But you know what the trouble is? You know what it is? People just won't listen to me! All this great thinking is going to waste! Just look at these papers. Every day they are filled with automobile accidents. You know, cars don't just go around banging into each other by accident. No, sir, there's a nut loose in that car somewhere and he's behind the wheel. And the way things are going, the motor car will soon be extinct. Do you think that this motor mayhem is caused by motor maniacs? No, it's caused by average people who live in quiet, respectable neighborhoods like this. For example, take an average man like Mr. Walker. He's considered a good citizen of average intelligence. And they are the worst kind. He's kind, courteous, punctual, and honest. Good morning, Mr. Walker. Good morning to you, Mr. Geef. Lovely day. Mr. Walker wouldn't hurt a fly, nor step on an ant. He believes in live and let live. Mr. Walker owns a motor car and considers himself a good driver. But once behind the wheel, a strange phenomenon takes place. Mr. Walker is charged with an overwhelming sense of power. His whole personality changes. Abruptly, he becomes an uncontrollable monster, a demon driver. Mr. Walker is now Mr. Wheeler, a motorist. Hey, Chief, watch where you're going, stupid. 
Shut up! 